My name is Rob Butler. I'm a geologist interested in exploring how the continental crust deforms, how it gets squashed, and how this deformation localises. I've come to the coast of the Costa Brava in Catalonia. Just a little way along from the port of Roses to look at this material, an igneous pluton of granodiorite, within which there are flattened fragments referred to in this film as xenoliths, foreign bodies derived from other slightly older igneous rocks. And these show dramatic zones of deformation recorded by flattening fabrics, not only in the xenoliths, but also in the host granodiorite. Let's see how this all works. We'll find that this is a bit of a conundrum. And we'll see if we can resolve it. So, clearly here we've got some older rock being invaded by this intrusive and you can see the process that's going on that's attempting to isolate these objects here, which are xenoliths. The pale granodiorite intrudes and incorporates patches of the older grey rock, a quartz diorite, with xenoliths, fragments now floating in the host granodiorite, which, as we zoom in, we can see is undeformed. It's got a speckly igneous texture frozen in as the granodiorite crystallized from the original magma. So let's see what happens to this material when it gets deformed. Well, look at the state of the xenoliths here. Here's one like that. Another one here coming down. Well, these are intensely strung out, aren't they? So you've got a, an aspect ratio on this. Well, that's about, what, one centimetre wide, probably by over 50 centimetres long. So that's a 50 to one axial ratio on that object. Intensely smeared out. The same is true of these other ones. Lots of apparent flattening. And if I look at the surrounding rock in here, the former igneous rock. It's got a really intense shape fabric defined by elongate clusters of felspar and little tails of quartz strung out. The original igneous material is now deformed to make an intense shape fabric that's essentially parallel to the long axis of our deformed xenolith. So intense deformation. Now I've not come very far from the undeformed xenoliths which are just behind me over there. So let's step back and look at the context for this deformation. So here's this zone of intense platy fabric. They're the margins, so it looks like a shear zone. So I'd better explain what a shear zone is, using this classic example studied by shear zone pioneer, John Ramsey. See how the xenoliths have flattened and swing in along with the fabric, which shows this pattern. But this is only half the shear zone. It had an opposite side as the fabrics swing in and then swing out. Shear zones are in essence ductile faults. All rocks have moved past relative to each other. So it's this pattern that's diagnostic. So is this how our example on the Costa Brava works? So, Let's first of all see if we can find a stretching lineation in this, and then we'll look at the deflection on the margins. So, nice zone of platy fabric. There's the foliation. You can see in 3D coming over. So this is the foliation plane. There's a pretty weak lineation, plunging gently into the outcrop like this. So a plan view, should be pretty good at detecting the shear sense from bending fabrics. Conveniently, the granodiorite contains late veins of white aplites. Well. 
So let's use these app lights that we've got around here to get an idea of the bending. Let's start off here. Tracing the app light along, it's offset, sheared into pods. Annotating this up, these are very localized shears that show these offsets, a shear sense, so-called left lateral shearing. So, this is moving this way, that's left lateral. Let's go over here. We can trace in our app light and it folds and then is swept out into a narrow streak. Looking down, here's the app light. And this is the sense of shearing that we deduce from that deflection. So the app lights. And this one's sweeping in like this, which implies right lateral. That's a bit of a puzzle. So back to our ideal shear zone. Well, okay, we have a relatively narrow zone of intense deformation picked out by those flattened zenoliths and the fabric in the granite diorite. But shear senses, well, on the left side here, it's right lateral, and on the right side, it's left lateral. So, it's not like this, but like this. This isn't a shear zone in Ramsey's sense. So this is a bit of a kinematic conundrum, and it implies this type of deformation, flattening. This is my rather grotty field sketch. I picked out the deformation fabric in green, a rather narrow zone, and the app light swinging in, sheared in, and sheared out again. So let's look at another structure just up more behind you. So, what a great outcrop. This app light comes in here, sweeps around, and then goes pinch and out. So let's look at this one, a bit of detail in here. The app light has felspars that are aligned like this, having grown out from the wall rocks in continuity with the flattened fabrics in the granite diorite. And the app lights are zoned. Aligned felspars on the margin and a quartz rich rim in the middle. So the app light crystallized first on the margins during ongoing deformation that intensified the felspar alignment in the app light and created fabrics like this. Looking along this app light segment, it looks undeformed in that it crosses the fabrics and the wall rocks, but it still has internal fabrics, quartz rich cores, and aligned felspars that grew out from the walls. It's the quartz crystals that have been streaked out, just as in the hosting granodiorite. We can capture these relationships on my field sketch. This is a narrow zone of intense flattening, defined by the strong fabric in the granodiorite and highly elliptical zenoliths. The applite that can be traced across this zone is sheared with opposite sense of shears on either margin. So this later strain is clearly localized on the margins of our narrow deformation zone. So this looks like a simple shear zone with a lineation like this, but the bendings are coming in like this on both sides. So perhaps a better explanation is that this is a zone of intense flattening, perhaps in a cusp coming into the big intrusion like this, flattening these materials over. So a question I have is how much of this deformation occurred as the 
main intrusion was crystallizing. Is there an earlier history here? Now we explore away from the outcrops we've looked at so far, but not that far away, we can look at the Xenoliths. Many of them are strongly aligned. But the surrounding granodiorite isn't necessarily deformed. There's no alignment of its igneous minerals. So the Xenoliths here achieved their alignment while the granodiorite was still a magma, or at least a crystal mush. So perhaps this structure is composite and it's formed during the solidification of the main intrusion on continuing as the aplites come in and then beyond that with exclusively solid state deformation. Let's cartoon this up. So to start with, the deformation is widely distributed. The granodiorite as a crystal mash deforming with just a few undeformed enclaves. The green xenoliths recording this early deformation the granodiorite not. But once fully crystallized, the deformation continued, but heterogeneously, the fabric now growing in the granodiorite, but not widely developed. A little later, the final phase of igneous activity and the intrusion of aplites opening up in this strain regime. These aplites are deformed, but into narrow localized deformation belts but overall the deformation seems like a continuous process, flattening the Ross's granodiorite as it gradually froze solid. And that deformation has flattened the xenoliths, created the shape fabric in the igneous rock and deformed these aplytic veins into these really spectacular shapes. Certainly some really great outcrops. These outcrops are nicely described in these papers one of which advocates the need to promote this area as a geosite. Check out the works by Jordi Carreras and Elena Druget and colleagues. But better still, visit the outcrops yourself to see if you agree with the interpretations imposed here of this kinematic conundrum. It's a shear zone that isn't a shear zone. <laughs>